2023 has been very interesting. And with the holiday approaching, I thought it was about time that we rank some pop culture and meme moments that have come out of the past year. So I asked you guys to send in some of your favorite moments. I consulted myself to find mine. From there, we have a curated list of pop culture moments and memes that we're gonna be ranking today. This list is not exhaustive, but it is definitive. So let's get into the tiers. Okay, first up, we have the poo poo platter tier. Kind of self-explanatory, I know, but any meme or moment that I feel like needs to be left in 2023 is gonna be ending up here. Shit from a butt, if you will. But guys, I'm getting kind of better. No, you're not. Get in the tier. After that, we have the what? MP4 tier. What? This is for the memes or moments that, to me, just didn't make a lot of noise or were kind of forgettable. This is no shade to Normani, by the way. I love her. I just also love this video. Next, we have the no but keep going tier. Now, this is inspired by a Twitter interaction between two previous YouTube collaborators, being Tyler Oakley and Troy Sivan. Are you reading sheet music? You're getting so good. Yes, I am. Let's do it. I'm almost good. No but keep going. This year is gonna be for any memes or moments that I just didn't get personally. Like, did I find them funny? No, but keep going. It's also gonna be where I put any memes that I feel like were funny at the time and are still used today, but I feel like they're not gonna make it out of 2023. After that, we have the Katy Perry Mental Hospital doll tier. Of course, inspired by, I made this Katy Perry doll in the mental hospital two years ago. I'm Katy Perry. This is for anything where I can like recognize the effort that was put into it. Like it's definitely, memorable. And if it's a meme, it's probably in my meme arsenal. And the final tier, the creme de la creme, is the Quaker Oats BBL tier. I don't think you guys understand just how much I love this photo. I picture this guy strutting Millie Bobby Brown style down the street with Body Do by Chloe Bailey playing in the background, and I enjoy every second of it. He's second only to Snap Snap Kirby because that's legitimately my sister. But this one is for the memes and moments that were truly the highlights of this year. Ones we'll look back on fondly as a community, and some that'll end up here because I'm incredibly biased and I just thought they were really funny. This is exactly why this list is not exhaustive though. Like I know a lot of you guys sent the submarine, but honestly, where the hell would that go here? Hmm? You know what? You tell me. I'm not going down for that shit. All right, now that the tears are out of the way, quick thank you to ThreadUp for sponsoring today's video. If you haven't heard of them before, ThreadUp is an online consignment and thrift store. I like them a lot just because it makes it a lot easier to buy secondhand, because I can shop by size, item, brand, or color, and there's no items every day. It's basically the perfect combination between the ease of online shopping, but you still get the perks of buying secondhand, whether that's a reduced environmental impact or a good deal. They also have a new feature where you can share your favorites. So I went through ThreadUp to find some holiday outfits and favorited my options, and you guys can actually go and shop them. I especially love shopping on ThreadUp in the winter because because it's starting to get colder, I don't want to pay full price for knitwear, and I'm able to find stuff from my favorite brands like Free People or Anthropology just by searching the brand name. And I picked up some really cute stuff. The first two things I got off ThreadUp were a black sweater from Free People and these like velvety pants from Urban Outfitters. I love them. I think they're very subtly Christmassy, but it's not your typical like red and green outfit, which is kind of nice to switch things up. I also got these Anthropology pants. I love pattern pants just because it's an easy way to make it look like you put more effort into an outfit than you actually had to. Like it's just so easy to pair these with a sweater and it always looks so sharp. I got such a good deal on these pants too. The estimated retail price was $118 and I got them off ThreadUp for only $40.99. I got two more sweaters from Free People. This blue one that's kind of a cross between a mock neck and a turtleneck, which I love just because I feel like the wider neck on it is super cute and just has a bit more of a relaxed vibe to it. This had an estimated retail price of $158, but I got it for only $50.99. Then I also got a more traditional turtleneck in red. This outfit is kind of reminding me of that photo of Dwayne The Rock Johnson, but like in a good way. Like a turtleneck in the winter is just just such a classic. It always looks so cute and festive. And you can actually get 40% off your first order this time instead of the usual 30%. I would definitely check them out though. I could not recommend them more. You can shop my holiday favorites with my link below and use code Casey for an extra 40% off your first order. Thanks again to ThreadUp for sponsoring today's video. Okay, the Rosanna and Mr. Beast beef was sent in a bit. This came about after YouTuber Rosanna Pansino had claimed that the winners from Mr. Beast Creator Games 3 had been switched from herself, Zach King, and Quackity to Larray, Logan Paul, and Zach King. Which listen, I'd be pissed too if I was replaced with Logan Paul. I bring this up though because of a certain post that she made that is honestly iconic. When I asked for the raw footage, Mr. Beast went silent. Like, okay, drama. Were you silent or were you silenced? Answer the question, Mr. Beast. Immediately, this goes in Katy Perry Mental Hospital doll tier because I use this photo so often. It's just so flexible. Someone wants you to elaborate on something embarrassing? When I asked for the raw footage, Mr. Beast went silent. Matt Reif was also sent in a ton. I'm gonna be honest, I don't really care to talk with this guy for longer than like 10 seconds just because I don't really find any of what he does to be particularly interesting or shocking, but he does remind me of that Leah Michelle tweet. Of course, being his chin looks strong and sturdy, like if I whacked it with a skateboard, it would gong like a church bell. 
Well, yes. This is a good meme and I love hearing it. I never want to not hear it. The progression of this video as the years gone on as well. Oh, yes! Like just lovely work. It's like a little choir of yes women. Why would I not like that? Definitely Katy Perry Mental Hospital doll tier. I use this all the time. Of course, the body do meme has to be mentioned. And of course, this is going in the BBL Quaker tier. I love this meme so much. First of all, the song is good, but it's also inherently funny, which makes it even better. And the edits are so funny, especially the Little Mermaid one. Do you ever wonder, like, who else is f***ing your man? The only issue with this meme though is that I've now replaced saying I'm so cold in awkward situations with saying do you ever wonder, which when you think about it is infinitely worse. Half the people I say this in front of have no idea what I'm talking about, then I try to explain it to them which makes it only more awkward, and then I end up reverting back to my original statement of wow, it really is cold out. I really wish I brought a sweater. I really can't hold that against it though. Okay, next we have the Timothy Chalamet Olive Garden debacle. This all started after Kylie Jenner and Timothy Chalamet were spotted at the Beyonce concert in LA and his stands proceeded to have a full meltdown about it. If you're feeling distressed by the video, it's okay, but please take care of yourself. Step away from social media for a couple of days. Don't attack or criticize Timothy. Too much money and time went into publicly harassing him and it finally paid off for those people. One of those accounts, Club Chalambay, ended up having a Twitter space to kind of debrief. And this wasn't small scale. 200,000 people tuned into this thing. The space in general was just a mess though. It was an hour long of cope. And this girl trying to explain that it was definitely a PR relationship. There was no way they actually liked each other. She also called Kylie a slurpy in that she was sugary crap in comparison to Lily Rose Depp, who she saw as champagne. And it was in this Twitter space that we got this iconic quote. We've never seen them even go to, you know, you know, Olive Garden. He loves Italian food. I mean, why not just go to Olive Garden? If I was Kylie Jenner, I would have pulled up to an Olive Garden with him and the Paps. That would have been funny as hell. And bring Stormy too. She loved the endless breadsticks. I'm gonna put this in the BBL Quaker tier though. Next we have Gag City. It was a fan initiative created by the Barbs to promote Nikki's new album, Pink Friday 2. Basically fans were using AI to create this like all pink city and they got inventive as hell with it. It was pretty funny overall though, but I think my favorite thing that came out of it was somebody who merged the Rihanna Dubai video with it. Hello Gag City. I'm so honored to be projected on the Barbs Khalifa. Like why is this shit never not funny? Hello Gag City. I am so honored to be projected on the- <laughs> I'm gonna put it in the no but keep going tier though because I feel like it's gonna be limited to this year. Pedro Pascal eating was a big one on TikTok. I feel like this is a very standard, accurate, that is so me meme. With that in mind though, I feel like this belongs to no keep going because I feel like it's gonna be left in 2023. The Peaches song from the Mario movie was also sent in a ton. Okay, don't kill me. I think this song is cute but it definitely was a bit of a flash in the pan. So I feel like it belongs to no, but keep going. Next we have the idol, which was such a wet fart of a show. Just loud, unneedy, and stinky. And for what? I think out of all the tiers, this probably fits best in the what.mp4 tier, just cause I feel like it fell so far below expectations in terms of like cultural impact. And it just wasn't good. Like there's nothing worse than a show that thinks that it's being way more interesting and provocative than it actually is. Kamala Harris laugh compilations on the other hand. The amount of times this year that I use Kamala Harris laugh compilations to get myself out of a bad mood, I don't wanna talk about it. You think you just fell out of a coconut tree? <laughs> Like I cannot watch that video of her and her sister without laughing. It is so funny. And the shit they were laughing about wasn't even that funny to begin with. But until then, you're just Kamala. No, I'm big sister. <laughs> <laughs> big sister general. <laughs> like she has a definition of an infectious laugh. And I love everything about it. BBL tier. Roman empires were also a big one this year. What's your Roman empire? I don't really have a Roman empire. What do I think about a lot? If I'm being honest, this was cute for like maybe 12 hours. But after that, suddenly everything on planet Earth is someone's Roman Empire. Like I'm supposed to sit here and believe that your Roman Empire is the Aritzia archive sale? Like, no, it's not. Be serious. I'm gonna put this in the no, but keep going tier because I do respect the energy. I'm just good. We're back on Pedro Pascal. This time we're talking about his fan cam. How would you like to ride home on a real cowboy? It's like, of course we have to talk about the fan cam. That thing was historical. The Pedro Pascal hysteria this past year was crazy and we love to see it. It's also just a great edit. Like I love TikTok editors and I especially love when they make edits of things that I like. There's just something so magical about finding a good ass edit with a character you're obsessed with. Like if it's edited a break in dishes or get back, I'm sat in my bed like that photo Sarah Paulson, okay? Of course this has to go in the BBL tier. 
Like this is a Hall of Fame fan cam. Okay, I admit that literally nobody sent me this, but I'm putting it here because I have to know if I'm the only one that's been getting these monkeys on my For You page on TikTok all year. They're always dressed to the nines or doing things that I've never seen a monkey do before in my life. Like, what do you mean the monkey is sipping boba tea? What the hell is going on? I'm really hoping that the comment section is gonna be full of people being like, oh my God, I have the monkeys too. But as it stands right now, I think this belongs to the what.mp4 tier because it is currently making no noise. A Hunger Games Renaissance also happened this year, which honestly has been lovely. It was spurred by the release of the prequel movie, and it's just been kind of nice to look back at the past fandom from the original movies and also read the old books again. But I think one of my favorite things that came out of the Renaissance is this. Can you can catch me now? Higher than the hopes that you brought down. Suzanne, love you girl. I'm gonna need you to get that pet out and write some more books. It's funny, but it's not. Of course, the Everybody on Mute challenge from the Beyonce concerts was huge. The competition between cities on who was the quietest, the reactions to people who didn't know they had to be quiet or people who were just being loud on purpose. Everything about this was funny as hell. Look around, everybody. definitely goes in the BBL tier. Girly Teen Girl was also this year, which if you don't remember, all started because of this one clip going viral on Twitter. Essentially, Girly Teen Girl from Faraway-ville gets rejected from Pearl's slumber party because Pearl is under the impression that it's SpongeBob in a disguise. But it turns out that it's actually not SpongeBob, and when Girly Teen Girl runs away, SpongeBob calls her ugly. So all of Twitter turns into this debate on whether you're Team Girly Teen Girl or if you're Team Pearl. Pearl harassed and assaulted Girly Teen Girl, and you guys are defending her? Girly Teen Girl is a freeloader. All she brought to the sleepover was a sleeping bag. But then this turned into how Mrs. Puff apparently murdered Girly Teen Girl to hide her affair with SpongeBob's dad in 2009. A threat. Now personally, I could see both arguments, okay? I didn't take a side. But this was entertaining as hell to spectate. Like this was a Twitter-wide red table talk about a 40 second clip from SpongeBob from an episode that aired in 2008. Like dare I say this is what the internet was made for. All in all, this was good, but I feel like I was expecting Girly Teen Girl to remain a little bit more culturally relevant than she has. Therefore, I think this whole situation belongs in the Nova Keep Going tier. Dream is back to be ranked. He's two for two. This time it has to do with that video where it looks like he's whacking his head on himself. There are a lot of different edits of this, but I think my personal favorite is this one. Like, I'm sorry, it's funny. Where do I want to put this though? I feel like Katy Perry mental hospital doll. XQC was also someone who was sent in, particularly for a moment from his debate with H3H3 where he started doing the worm. Like, where's he going? What's his story? Barbenheimer, of course, was a big one as well. I don't think anybody can argue that this was just a huge pop culture moment. Like the summer of Barbenheimer was one for the books. I haven't seen theaters that packed in ages and it was fun as hell. I know they recently tried to recreate this with I think it was Five Nights at Freddy's and Paw Patrol, but it just didn't stick the same. And I am willfully ignoring all the t-shirt bot spam while I'm ranking this. So BBL tier it is. I am telling you right now, that mother that mother back there is not real. Let me be clear. I believe her wholeheartedly. Like the conviction alone. She was right, I don't care. I could have been sitting in the seat that she was pointing at and I would have still agreed with her. This meme's ability to stay relevant though over the past few months has honestly been kind of surprising. And dare I say because of that, she belongs in the Katy Perry Mental Hospital doll tier. Of course, I have to mention Attention Pickpocket. This definitely had its moment on TikTok, okay? There was a period of weeks there where you couldn't go on that app longer than three minutes without hearing that woman's voice. Attention Pickpocket! But even considering all that, when was the last time you heard Attention Pickpocket? And because of that, I think it belongs in what.mp4. Honest to God, this man just about broke the internet by shaving his head. So it was definitely expected that some variation of the words Harry Styles and bald were gonna be showing up a lot. But honestly guys, I don't think he looks bad. I don't understand the meltdowns. I would actually argue he has the head for baldness. I, on the other hand, do not. My shit is way too square. I look like a Funko Pop. Here's the thing. He's not gonna be bald forever. So I don't really know where to put this. Actually, maybe I should put it in the no but keep going tier because I don't really necessarily agree with all the upset. Next, we have Taylor and Travis. I know a lot has happened with those two pop culturally, but personally for me, the most interesting thing that has come into that relationship is the seemingly ranch tweet. Taylor Swift was eating a piece of chicken with ketchup and seemingly ranch. Like this is the kind of unserious fan shit I miss. The hi guys, it's Paula here. Sorry, I was gone for a few days. I was kidnapped when I got out of school. 
I'm fine, so don't worry, so yeah, type shit. Actually, on second thought, that is kind of serious. But you get what I mean, right? Like, if your fan account isn't trying to accurately identify the sauce on your paper plate housing a single chicken tender, then what are they even there for? Definitely Katy Perry Mental Hospital doll tier, though. I think about this all the time. One of the biggest submissions was... Which I kind of love because the story behind this edit going viral is just so good. For starters, it's a nine-year-old birthday edit for Josh Hutcherson that randomly blew up when it was reposted on TikTok. Word actually got back to the original person who posted the video and she left this really cute pinned comment. Oh my god, I can't believe this video blew up after all these years. My little sister showed me all the videos on her TikTok and I think it's hilarious what you guys have done with it. Shout out to Natalie for sharing the video on her TikTok and making all this happen. I had so much fun making this edit back then and it warms my heart to see a wave of new fans having fun with it. Like guys, why am I getting sentimental over this? There's also a video on TikTok of a bunch of fans getting Josh Hutcherson's attention at a soccer game to tell him about it. And allegedly, this was Flo Rida's fan message to all of his top Spotify fans for Spotify Wrapped. Unfortunately, I wasn't one of his top listeners, so I can't confirm myself. So I'm just putting it here unconfirmed. Would be hilarious if it's true, though. This has to go in the BBL tier, though. I love this. Where's my dad? I'm all alone. I really enjoyed the Where's My Dad I'm All Alone video, but it did not last very long, which is unfortunate because it really was funny. And the kid had a really good voice. But ranking wise, it has to go on what.mp4. As an outside observer, it feels like George Santos is just like a product of an ever growing word salad that just gets worse and worse. But the thing is, every headline is like actually true. Like George Santos congratulates Furry, who paid 680 Canadian dollars for said congratulations, is a real thing. It's right here. Hey, Heath, George Santos here. I'm so proud of you for coming out as a furry. We really need to leave this in 2023 though. Like memes aside, it is insane to me that he's able to charge that. Toxic God. Guys, I'm sorry, I can't do it, okay? This is poo poo platter. I never want to hear this song or see this thumbnail ever again. Wrap it up, lady. You will never be Marty from Girls. The Josh Hutcherson edit wasn't the only old thing that came back though this year. 2023 was also the year of the Lime Lips. There were so many different edits. There was also a Lime Lips gallery. I have to put this in Katy Perry Mental Hospital doll tier though. Lime Lips never die. FNAF also had a really big year because the movie came out. For some reason, my TikTok was convinced that I was like the biggest FNAF fan, which I am very actively not. I am terrified of those things. So this definitely belongs in No But Keep Going because I do not get it, but I respect the people who do. Next, we have the lady in the red dress singing Where Have You Been? I love this video so much. And the edited version is even better. Like, why is this unironically hype as hell? Like, I wanna be with you. We can sing it together. It will sound terrible, but we'll have fun. When it comes to the Paris bedbugs, I'm not gonna lie. Are you happy to be in Paris? They low key fell off. Don't come over to my house though, okay? Wherever you guys are, you can stay right there. One person was very dedicated to making sure that I mentioned Lana Del Rey's stint at Waffle House, seeing as they sent it once, but then eight minutes later spammed it six more times over the course of a minute. I get it though. This was very random for her to do. It kind of reminds me of like Trisha Paytas when she showed up to what I think was a Domino's in like full Domino's employee attire. Apparently the story behind this photo though was that Lana was eating with her siblings at the Waffle House and the employees working there offered her a t-shirt, she puts it on, and then the employees joke that she should bring out an order. Someone ended up taking a picture, it got posted online, and the rest is history. This has to go in the Katy Perry Mental Hospital doll tier because it is still so funny. Like the photo is just perfect. The I've Plane meme also got sent a lot. I'm not gonna lie, I don't think I can show the whole video without getting flagged by YouTube. So as a bit of a workaround, I'm gonna pin it in the pinned comment so you can click it, watch it, and then come back here. For anyone who's lazy though, I'll show a little bit of it. <laughs> This edit ended up inspiring a ton of other edits, but I think this one is definitely my favorite. It's just so on beat with the song too. And even headspace wise, the course of that song makes me want to fling myself out of a plane too. And because of that, it does hurt me to say this, but I think it belongs in the no but keep going tier. Like I haven't really seen this edit in a while. She kind of fell off, literally. Okay, don't get mad at me, but I do refer to this video as the boob lady from Goat Story. I'm sorry, okay? What else am I supposed to identify her with? Her name? I will be the first to admit that I am not an unbiased party when it comes to ranking this meme, okay? I have beef with this meme. I am not kidding when I say that every time I was on Twitter in a public space where someone could 100% see my phone screen, this video would be on my timeline. And there is no chill way to turn around to an actual chic normal and be like, hey, 
I know you probably saw that video of an old lady with really big boobs, but it's like in an ironic way. Like, what are you talking about? Get away from me. And she's going in the no, but keep going to her because of it. Of course, we have to mention the Shein influencer. Okay. This girl was truly the gift that kept on giving. Every time I thought I had seen the last motivational montage or soundbite from her, a new one would pop up. Like it just never stops. Definitely Katy Perry mental hospital doll. Girl dinner is an easy no, but keep going tier. Don't get me wrong here. It was a cute trend for like, two hours, but then it started discourse. Which was just kind of annoying, cause like why can't I just make a joke about eating a slice of Favardi cheese at three in the morning? Put your hands up in the air. I kind of hate to say this, but Planet of the Base is pretty much the definition of what done it before. I thought it was kind of cute though. Like women are my favorite guy. I think why I liked it so much is because it kind of reminded me of the YouTube parody era. And in fairness to them, they took that meme far. Like they performed on stage at a Jonas Brothers concert to a handful of people who knew what the meme was, but who cares? Going back to Twitter for the next one. Onika Burgers was born in 2023 under the shade of a pop-based tweet about Northwest drawing Kris Jenner. Why is she eight? She equals Onika, eight equals Burgers, and it ended up inspiring a slew of different tweets. My personal favorite being this one. God, I miss when Twitter replies were actually good. Now it's just verified accounts using ChatGPT. Like just look at the replies on this photo of Lady Gaga. She's giving baby shark vibe. What does that even mean? This next one might be controversial, but I did not care for Pookie Guy. If you don't know the account, it's this guy who sits in a car and like films different videos. I don't really know how to describe them, so I'll just play them. God wanted me to be loud and sassy. What can I say? What can I say? What can I say? Like I'm clearly missing something because people are obsessed with him, but I don't know, I just don't get it. Next we have AI covers. They had a huge moment this year. These do still kind of scare me, but I will admit the Plankton one where he's singing diamonds. I saw the life inside so the Oddly emotional. And don't even get me started on the Trisha Paytas ones. Why are those ones specifically so legit? They must tip my kindness for weakness. And I know this technically doesn't fit in the category of AI covers, but it's definitely AI. So I want to sneak in that Kardashian stan edit. I think Ariana is better than Selena. Are you crazy? Selena is an it girl. Her beauty brand, Rare Beauty, is way more successful. She was on Disney. She has more followers on Instagram. What about streams? Can Ariana write November Flush in your flannel pure? Can Taylor sing the God is a Woman outro? Like, what is going on here? I'm sorry, I have to put this in the BBL tier. Lorax Booty was another one that came and went really quick considering just how funny it was. Context, somebody noticed that one of the characters in the Lorax was throwing cartoon ass for some reason, and it spawned a lot of equally funny imitations. <laughs> Unfortunately, I have to put in the what.mp4 tier though. When was the last time you saw the Lorax booty? Girl, the strike was a big one. This came from the tweet, you couldn't make bridesmaids today. Why? Girl, the strike. This instantly became a hit and had like a billion different imitations. But even considering that, I feel like it'll be left in 2023 because there's just not a strike anymore. I don't know, maybe I'm wrong about that one. Sad Ant was also big this year. I love this little ant. He's my Snoopy. Not to be he's so me, but like, he's so me. He's so somber, so done with it all. He's like Ben Affleck. And what I don't like? No, nope, I'm gonna stop you right there. Poo poo platter. Of course we have to mention the She Ain't No Diva TikTok. This is one of the best TikToks that came out of this year. It's based off of Beyonce's performance of Diva, where she pointed at someone in the crowd while singing She Ain't No Diva, which then inspired Life of a Silly Girl on TikTok to make this skit. She ain't no diva. This is so good. Look at the face she makes. 10 out of 10, BBL tier, like, come on. The Selena blanket meme was good, don't get me wrong, but I'd argue what was funnier about it was how fast Trisha Paytas was able to copy it. Like that girl has Fashion Nova level reflexes for that shit. The photo itself though, I think belongs in what.mp4. Like it definitely was a flash in the pan. The Kevin James and Cam from Modern Family memes are quite similar, so I'm gonna rank them together. I honestly love this genre of meme. Every single tweet I see that comes from it is just, Perfect. I think what makes it so good is that both of them look so friendly and wholesome in the photos too. So even if the joke isn't good, I'm seeing a friendly face. There was only one thing that you guys were suggesting that I was completely stumped on what it actually was, and that was Skibidi Toilet. Skibidi, Skibidi, Skibidi. This has been a mystery to me for most of this year because I'd heard about it in passing, but I just never bothered to Google it. It was kind of like a digital Loch Ness monster. So when I saw it pop up in the suggestions, I thought this is the perfect time to finally figure out what this thing is. So I looked it up. And I 
don't get it. So I have to put it in the notebook keep going tier. I respect how into it you guys are, but I do not understand it. There was a time this year where you couldn't go five minutes without hearing Angela Bassett did the thing. Unfortunately, it seems like it's been a very, very long time since then, which is unfortunate because the performance is honestly entertaining as hell. Like the energy is there. Angela Bassett did the thing. But I think at this point it belongs in what.mp4. I already knew there was no way I was getting out of this video without mentioning Ariana and Spongebob, which if you had told me a year ago that Ariana Grande would be getting a divorce and ending up with a guy who was also under the Nickelodeon umbrella at some point, I would have assumed maybe a co star. Not the cartoon sponge. But yet, here we are. Now, Ethan Slater is not the voice of the cartoon Spongebob. He actually sang for Spongebob in the Spongebob musical. There's a big difference. Jump out of bed, mix up a breakfast for my favorite pet snail. Their coupling sparked one of the biggest scandals of the year though, because Ethan had been married. Her unreleased song fantasized leaking and going viral at the same time though made this so much messier. Like, have you looked at the lyrics for that song? This could not have happened at a worse time. Ranking wise, I kind of want to just put this in poo poo platter because it's just messy as hell. And you guys have got to stop making those side-by-sides of Ethan and her brother. I'm not gonna lie, when I saw the Michaela Kim Kardashian submissions, I thought for sure you guys were just misremembering because to me, I was like, that happened at least two years ago. But that shit happened this year. The iPhone alarm level inflection this woman has is just crazy to me still though. Kim Kardashian. We're gonna put this in the what.mp4 tier though because it was everywhere for a bit, but it did fall off the face of the earth. Thank God. <laughs> Princess Jane was such an interesting product of AI to watch over the past year. It's a project that's been run by this Twitter account named Rufus where he shows off Princess Jane's new tricks. And listen, not to shit on another woman, but her tricks kinda suck. Hello, my name is Princess Jane of Lumaria and I return with my original trick. I hope you enjoy it. My personal favorite trick from her though was her singing. Oh, the rage and play, the scarlet sky, spreading far and wide, we're on the bride. Unfortunately, I will be putting her in poo poo platter though, because the thought of her developing sentience scares me. I'm not gonna lie, I'm kind of scared to put Megan where I think she belongs because I have a very low fear tolerance and I do not like the way she was handling that paper cutter in the trailer. Like, I appreciated her gags, but. I do think she belongs on what.mp4. Prince Harry's audiobook was also mentioned. I think what made this all the more funny is that when he would go out to a bookstore or something like that, it would just be shelves upon shelves of his face because that's the cover. But at that point, everybody had already heard that creepy ass line. So that's all you're thinking of when you're looking at this menacing wall of Prince Harry. My penis is awesome. Okay, Colleen Hoover. I want to put this on what.mp4 though, because I feel like everyone forgot about this, which like, Rightfully so. The NPC trend was also massive this year. I'll be honest, I still don't understand this trend at all, and I've yet to meet anybody who does, but I respect the hustle because I could not do that shit for hours on end. Also worth noting that once again, Trisha Paytas was at the scene of the crime. I think I'll put this in the no but keep going tier though. Although enjoyment got sent a ton, which rightfully so, this thing is timeless. When did it end? Oh, don't enjoy me. Quite literally the definition of loud and wrong, and yet, it's perfect. BBL tier, no questions asked. Like, what a legend. The Haley and Selena feud was also a big thing this year. I'm gonna be honest, this is poo poo platter immediately. Like, I'm sorry. At this point, unless those two are getting in those like inflatable hamster balls and fighting it out Disney Channel game style, I don't care. All right, we've got our final ranking though. As always with these videos, it might be definitive for me, but it doesn't have to be definitive for you. So if you would have ranked anything differently, feel free to chime in in the comments down below. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to give it a like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out. You can also follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Twitch, Spotify, Goodreads, all that stuff will be in the pinned comment down below. Don't forget, you can check out ThreadUp and click my link to shop my holiday favorites and use code Casey for an extra 40% off your first order. But otherwise, really hope you guys have a great holiday. Hopefully this year has been good to you. If it hasn't, hopefully the next year will be better. I feel like a bit of a cornball saying this, but I've had so much fun on the internet with you guys, so thanks for that. But I guess I'll see you guys in the new year.